right? So when there's things stacked horizontally or vertically, but also in terms of depth, if there's subview, 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 mm -hmm. and layers and so forth, there's all sorts going on there. But that's that's a lot for for one person to understand. If that makes sense, I mean. If you were to come to a, a, a new code base and say to a developer, okay, let's start identifying the problems here, how would you do that? You know, what would you use to identify mm. these performance problems? How would you do it? Well, I guess, first of all, I would start looking for problems for what's causing them what if I actually saw that a problem is happening. So visually on a device, or I guess if you don't have a full range of devices, then you need to start like profiling and seeing if you're uh, and using um, like instruments to see if they're somewhere where you're spending uh, too much time. Like for example, uh, you can use time profiler to identify if you have CPU bottleneck somewhere. If there's some functions that performing layout and they're doing a lot of calculations, or maybe it's you will have a GPU bottleneck somewhere. So it's taking a lot of time to perform expensive rendering operations like compositing. Mm. Um, and blending, um, and uh, for that there's also an instrument where you can measure frame rates, and uh, a GPU bottleneck can be identified by consistent uh, but low frame rates. Okay, so it sounds like, uh, this is what, one of the nice things about doing display and layout and so forth, the first step to identifying a problem is literally run the app on an old device and yeah. scroll around and see if you can go, well, it's, it's stuttering a little bit now, what's going on here? Is that a fair first step? Yeah, that's exactly what I would do. And uh, if the older device you have kicking around, the better, because that device will be uh, will give you a, uh, a preview for any issues so much more than your newest iPhone. Yeah, I remember um, it used to be the case that the iPad 3 was my preferred torture device. Uh, that was a while ago. But that was the very first Retina iPad, and it wasn't really ready for Retina. The CPU, the GPU wasn't up to the power of handling that big screen so that's the only time i've seen them release a new ipad ipad 4 uh in less than a year it came out six months later because the 3 was so very bad at performance but it made for a great test bed if your code worked great if it was super fast ui on an ipad 3 boom you're flying you could work on ipad 2 4 1 and they all, all worked basically so yes find a first torture device so once you've found that slow screen you've, you've seen it stuttering on one screen the next thing then is to go to time profiler instruments and really dig into it, right? Uh, you could do that, or you can take a look at the code and the layout of uh, maybe your cells or your scroll view, what, like whatever it is that's causing you issues, um, and and kind of think about what are the operations that could be causing a bottleneck here. So, for example, are you doing a lot of blending? Are there a lot of transparencies? Are there a lot of shadows or rounded, rounded corners? Are you... Are you making a lot of work for getting the cell on the screen? And if you are, like, what could you do to uh, kind of minimize that work? Right. And that's actually an area where I think UI Kit gives you a lot of control, really. You know, you, you can mm -hmm. think about every small part of your cell and control it exactly. Whereas in Swift UI, you just say, I want this thing, and it's, it's done for you. In UI Kit, you have the UI view. You have the CA layer behind it. You can monkey around all over the code and make it exactly as bad, often, uh, but as, as good as you like in terms of performance. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, you could um, you could fix transparencies. I think that's one of the one of the biggest things that people often forget about is making sure their views aren't transparent it, where, when they can be. But transparencies isn't just view dot background color equals clear. Transparencies are also the corners of a view whose corners you rounded off, or transparencies are shadows, or transparencies are like alpha equals dot five, right? Like it's there. There are so many ways that you can uh, cause a transparency in your code um, that without realizing it, and then and that causes a lot of expensive blending operations because for every transparent layer, the GPU has to compute the color of every pixel by compositing every single pixel on top of each other. Hmm. Um, or, for example, uh, you know, on the simulator debug tools, um, transparencies is one of the things you can identify by turning on color transparent layers. And another one is uh, pixel misalignment. Um, and so that doesn't happen as much with auto layout, but, uh, or I guess it doesn't happen at all with auto layout, but with, uh, with frame-based layout, what you can get into is 
when, where your uh, view doesn't start or doesn't end on a full pixel. So instead of, for example, starting at 0, 0, you start at 0, 0 0.5. And this is an issue because instead of, even if your view is solidly colored, now uh, to compute the color of the pixel at 0, 0, um, anti-aliasing is triggered and the colors of surrounding pixels are being pulled in to uh, calculate the color of that one pixel. So that's probably not what you wanted. Like you wanted to start on zero zero, probably don't want to start at halfway. Mm, definitely. So that's two great examples of common uh, examples. That's two common examples of uh, performance problems folks hit in UIKit. Give me, give me a third. What's the third most common thing people do when they're trying to make UIKit faster? Well, I actually think sometimes people over optimize. So uh, <laughs> I think uh, just like uh, you should think about performance when you are writing your code and think about uh, what will make sure I don't have too many layout passes, wh what is the minimum that, I'm, that I need to do that I'm doing. Um, it's also really easy to jump down the rabbit hole of, uh, oh, I'll just optimize this. Oh, this might be a little bit better. Oh, this might be a little bit better also. And then you have this over-engineered, over-optimized, overly commented code that is really, like, you know, you have comments everywhere explaining this, this, this because oh, of I that, okay. and this, this, this because <laughs> of that. And like you, it, it's, now you've written a book instead of, you know, a single class, and uh, you really over-engineered the solution when you didn't really even have a problem yet. This yes. was like done preemptively. Yes.